So we're just going to give maybe two minutes grace, uh, 5 or 5, we'll, um, kick off. I can see some people are just joining. So, yeah, in about two, two minutes, we'll be uh, put together and running. So, so welcome to those of us who are in the meeting already. So enjoy the music while uh, wait for the rest of the people to uh, try to log in to join. Can you hear me, everyone? Okay, good yes. afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, good, good afternoon, morning. good evening, good morning, good whatever. <laughs> whatever time, <laughs> whatever time zone you are in. Um, I want to welcome all of us once again to this uh, evening session. Uh, a big thank you to all of us who were with us in the afternoon session. Uh, in spite of the technical uh, challenges that we had, that you know, we overshot our time. But I want to say a big thank you to all of us who waited patiently and I'm sure we're all blessed at the end of the day uh, at that session. So uh, we, are, we are in for another uh, impactful session, I believe, uh, this evening. Um, so I want to join all of us to open our hearts as um, our sister uh, speaks to us. I believe, I believe she's a servant of the Lord, and uh, I believe that... Uh, uh, the Lord will bless us through her. Uh, just before I maybe say a few things about her and ask her to uh, take the floor to speak to us, I uh, will just ask Bratosin. I can see Bratosin is online. Uh, Bratosin, please just pray for us. Um, I will ask, and I will say a few things. I will ask the sister. Uh, sister since her name is Tinswalu. I hope I'm, I hope I'm correct with the pronunciation. I said, I'm, I hope I'm correct with the pronunciation of your name. Oh, sorry. I'm, I was not aware my mic was off, but it's very perfect. That's exactly how it's pronounced. Okay. Okay, okay that's, that's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, so, Bratosi, please uh, give us a, an opening prayer. Um, thank you, Brother Nalala. Let's have a prayer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Father, we want to thank you for yet another time in your presence. We appreciate you for this summit and how far you have been our help. We thank you for all that you have caused us to learn. We give you a lot of praise in the name of our Lord, Yeshua Hal Mashiach. Lord, we commit this section into your hand. Once again, we ask, O Lord, that you will have your way. You will speak Amen. through the mouth of our sister to us. Uh, that you open our mouth to speak, you will feel it with utterances from your presence. We we'll take over the power in the air, we we'll take over the power over the internet, that this section will be made free in the name of the Lord Yeshua Al Masha. Your hand will build Amen. upon all the devices you want to use and all the devices that uh, will be required for an each free presentation. We ask, Lord, that your hand will build upon it. And at the end, we'll hold the blessed to the glory and praise of your name. We well, thank mm -hmm. you. I will give you a lot of praise. In the name of the Lord, Yeshua, Hal Masha, we we'll pray. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you for, uh, for that prayer. Yeah. Um, again, I'd love to remind us that uh, uh, this meeting is prophetic and it's uh, strategic. Just after the afternoon session, uh, a dear sister of mine sent me a message that in another platform where she belongs to, uh, uh, the prophecy of Pyrethin was being uh, quoted and referred to. Uh, and then, uh, and I'm also listening to someone, I think a few days back, who was talking about uh, it's time for Africa to arise and shine. And this person was even talking about investment and economy. 
but it kept speaking about it's time for Africa. And it kept emphasizing Africa is your time to arise, shine. And I mean, I was, I was, uh, I was touched by that. And to hear also another person this afternoon uh, sending me that mm -hmm. uh, message it confirms to me that uh, this meeting is not just a meeting. It's not just a virtual conference. Okay, God is saying something to us. God is uh, prophesying to us. Uh, again, remember, I said to us at the beginning that um, God is part, part of the one of the central um, issue or, or point of focus in in the prophetic word of the Lord over us as continents is the is the, is the, is, the, is the common or co collective destiny between the nation Nigeria and uh, in South Africa. Uh, and I said then that what we are seeing in this conference is. It is part of the fulfillment. It's a build on the fulfillment of seeing these two nations coming together. Our sister will be speaking to us uh, from uh, South Africa uh, this afternoon. Uh, and, and for me, I'm, I, I rejoice in my heart that God is working out His work. So it's not just about the speaking and the presentation, okay, but also about the fact that God is working out a strategic relationship between these two nations. Um, so we are living. We are living in a time. We are living in an era where. Prophecy is being fulfilled, and I'm excited in my heart that all the rest of the other components of what God has spoken uh, will be fulfilled. You know, and just a quick uh, bow about our sister for many of us who do not know her. Uh, well, I've not met her in person, but I've spoken to her uh, on phone, um, and, I, and we thank God that we are God is linking us together uh, to work together and to to fellowship together to see the purpose of the law born in Africa. Now, her name is uh, Tinswalu Christian Nkuna, uh, like I've said. Uh, she's a South African. She's an author. She's also a transformational speaker and also a life coach. Okay, um, I know many of us are aware. In recent, there has been a lot of uh, awareness about life coach uh, in Lagos and in Nigeria. And I, I know a few people who are, who are into that. So she's also a life coach. So I trust that the Lord is going to bless us from that perspective. She's, she's, a, she's a child of God with a passion for helping young people in areas of relationships, personal development, uh, dealing with rejection and, and emotional healing. And, and we all agree with me that relationship is, uh, is one very issue that affects us as young people. Uh, whether you are married or whether you are not, okay, whether you are not married or you are married, it affects us. It's your relationship as young people, and I believe it's an area that uh, we can still learn. There's still so much to learn about how to handle relationship from kingdom perspective. And you also agree with me that a lot of us also need uh, inner healing. You know, a lot of us has been hurt, wounded, you know, by our environment, by our parents, by you know. Um, uh, people that will live with guidance and what have you, okay? And we can't be all that God has called us to be if we are not whole, if we are not, you know, there's no healing. Uh, and I know that the nation South Africa, the nation Nigeria, the young people, to a large extent, we need healing. We need inner healing, we need emotional healing. And that's our sister there. Um, uh, educational background, she's a communication science graduate, okay? And she's also a marketplace ministry, a graduate of a marketplace uh, ministry uh, institute. She's also the, uh, the founder of Wise Maidens Network. Uh, Wise Maidens Network supports, you know, supports coaching and counseling young women and young single mothers. Okay, if you have been to South Africa, you you will understand because there are a lot of single mothers in South Africa. Uh, I've seen that in a couple of times. I've, I've been privileged to travel to South Africa. Okay, a lot of single mothers. Okay, so she's doing a very strategic work in that area. Uh, she has featured in a number of radio stations, magazines, uh, television in South Africa. Talking about her book, okay, she's, she's written a book titled Single Again, and then Ministering the Message of Love and Forgiveness and uh, Restoration. So I believe that we are going to be blessed uh, this, afternoon, this evening uh, so our sister speaks to us. So, with all honor, welcome again uh, our dear sister Tinswalo Christian Okuna uh, as she's bringing the word of the Lord to us. 
Amen. Amen. Um, thank you very much, uh, my brother. I would like to you know, just appreciate God for the, this platform and for the past, um, it's been three days now, and, you know, all the sessions that we've had were very, very powerful. So for me, they were very enlightening, you know, a great platform to get my mind challenged as a young person, you know, to grow and to to understand where I come from as, um, as an African, as, you know, a child of God, to understand the history and background, because when you understand the background of the history, it gives you perspective as to why things are happening the way they are happening, why we are where we are, and it also gives you insight as to how you can, you know, improve going forward or you know it, it just puts you in a position to to understand a whole lot of things so i'm grateful to god for each and every teacher that was here or that is here that came and you know they just spoke the heart of god they just taught us it felt like i was in a master's class somewhere and it has just really really been um amazing and i'd like to thank all the organizers all the founders of this um ministry this you know who have created this platform it, it's really amazing when you see young people who are still able to hear from god and do what god has sent them to do because i believe that this is not just something for your own personal benefit but it is benefiting all of us you know the the communities that we are representing the countries that we are representing as we come here so it, it's actually having you know that global impact beyond even what you thought uh, or rather what you were planning to do but god is going to use this ministry just to reach you know a whole lot of africans to transform our lives to liberate our thinking and to just bring us closer to god and uh, let me also greet all the pastors that are in the house i greet all the leaders all the elders and also special greetings to pastor moses um when he's the one that uh, connected me to this ministry. I've been to his church a couple of times when um, they've organized services and conferences for young people. I've been there to just share what God has laid in my heart and sometimes just to hear and learn from um, his wisdom and also to learn under his anointing. So I'm really, really um, grateful to be part of this session tonight. And um, I think the very, very first person that introduced me to Nigeria, I've never been to Nigeria, but one of the first um, Nigerians, pe Nigerian people that I knew is uh, Dr. Richie Achuku. I'm not sure, um, some of you know him. And uh, so I'm just really grateful because, you know, God works in his um, own ways. And mm -hmm. the, the, the one thing that I really, really love about God is that he does not do things without revealing them to, to his children. So somehow I knew that I would have some kind of connection, you know, or a platform like this, but I did not know how that was going to come about or when that was going to happen. So it helps to, to really walk, you know, with God because he gives you glimpses and ideas of where he wants to take you or the things that he wants you to do. So um, the theme for this conference it's arise and shine from uh, the book of isaiah chapter 60. um so now I, I was looking to find out what exactly the word arise meant or what it means so it means to to emerge you know to to get up to to awaken you know if um when we are all african so you know your mothers when you oversleep and you're supposed to wake up and do something and they call your name and you don't get up, the next thing you hear is them coming with a bucket of water, you know, next thing the water is all over your face, and, you know, you arise, you, you, you get up, you know, in that um, rush, you know, you get up with that force to say, you know what, I want whoever is here or whoever is listening to hear that someone has awakened, someone has risen. And now shining means being visible, you know, as a church, um, especially here in South Africa, you hear that we are 
this percentage or over 80 to 90 percent a Christian nation. But when it comes to certain important matters, you hardly see where the Christians are. So they are not able to stand boldly and declare that I'm a Christian. But when it comes to some forms that we fill in, when they ask of your religion or your Christianity, that's where you have the boldness to say that I am a Christian. But when you arise and shine, this basically means that wherever you are, wherever you are positioned, it is known, it is seen, it is visible that you are a Christian. Now, the word shining means giving a reflection of, of, of light or, you know, reflecting a light on something, which is very um, beautiful because now the Bible, Bible says we are the light of the world and you know when you light a lamp you don't cover it under something but you put it you know on a stand or on a table stand where everyone can be able to see it so we arise we shine we take your pos our position we make impact and have influence and this influence we have it through diligence and excelling in the things that we are called to do or where god has positioned us um one of the leaders that was speaking earlier this morning, he said that we need to be people of competence. So beyond just getting opportunities because God has anointed us and has called us, we need to get into those positions and perform, you know, and, and be competent. And, you know, people don't or people of the world do not select us for certain things just because they know of our association with Jesus Christ, but they want to see results. So our Christianity as young people should not just be about anointing, praying in tongues, but we are not able to produce results. So we need to be able to be competent and produce results. So now who needs to arise? So it's, it's, it's sleeping believers because there are some of us or a whole lot of us who are just believers by heart or believers who go to church. And now churches here in South Africa have been closed for a very long time. So that's when you get to see exactly where people are standing. So you need to arise as a sleeping believer because in the, I, was, I was reading the Bible last night and I read in Matthew 13, verse 24, and he said, it says that in the middle of the night when the people are sleeping, that's when the wicked man comes to plant weeds you know, in whatever good plans you have been pl you have been planting. So when we are sleeping as believers, we are not able to shine. We are not able to be seen because we need, you know, to arise and stand on our feet. So spiritually dead or dormant believers also need to arise. You know, those gifts that are dormant, those ministers that are dormant, you know, some people have received their callings a long time ago, and then they just accepted it. They put it in a little box, packaged it nicely, and put it under their uh, under their mattress. But in the book of Second Timothy, chapter one, verse sixty-seven, that's where it says you need to continuously stir up the gift of God within you. So we need when you 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 stir it up. That's when you are able to arise, and then you are able to walk in it, and then you are able to shine and have that impact. And we need to rise as sons and daughters of God. You know, the Bible talks about the manifestations of the true sons of God. And we also need to rise, you know, as, um, as parents, you know, as leaders, because even if you don't have a ministry, you don't have an organization, you don't have a church or a company, the fact that you are a parent, that is your first role of leadership after leading yourself. So we need to rise and take our position. So this is no longer the time to just sit back and watch our children do as they please and say, ah, they've got freedom or they've got rights, they've got all these things. God has entrusted those children to us and he trusted us that he will equip us and we will be able to lead them in the ways of the Lord and we'll be able to guide them so they can become all those things that God has created for them to become. So I'll just um, focus on just four areas where, you know, we, we need to shine or where we need to, to arise. And the first one, which is one of the things that I really, really love, it's the mindset or our mentality or our way of thinking. So when I've been hearing over and over, you know, the history that was shared by my sister yesterday and this morning and some of the things that I've been reading as well. So one of the greatest things that was taken from Africa or that was um, 
a target for us or against us was the mindset. In the speech that was quoted um, this morning, the Willie Lynch speech, what one of the things that was said, or one of the quotations that Willie Lynch has once said was that you take the mind of the slave and then you keep, you know, you, you, you let them keep the body. So that basically means once the mind is taken, the body already by default becomes, you know, the spoils for war, or it becomes something that you can just easily dictate. Because if you can dictate the mind up in here, every other thing that the person does, the way they act, believe, think, or whatever, then we'll go in the direction of how the mind has been um, conditioned. So our minds are the control hubs of everything that we do or what we believe about ourselves, how we see ourselves as um, Africans or as individuals. And, you know, so if your mind is a gateway, you cannot just afford to just leave the gate open for anything and anyone to just come in and, you know, say the things as they please. And you just accept, you just keep taking things, you know, that have a negative influence on, on, on your mind. So if your mind is like, I look at it most of the time, like a farm or, or, or a plantation where every seed that is thrown there has potential to grow. And it is your responsibility to decide what you are going to fertilize in your mind, what you are going to nurture in your mind. So if we continuously nurture the limiting beliefs, the negative beliefs, then it becomes difficult for us to shine or to flourish or to have influence because whoever can control your mind is able to confine your, your, your actions. So now the world's opinion of us as Africans, because we, we sometimes we are looked down on, we are looked at those people that, you know, even when you succeed, it becomes like this big miracle, you know, like what you've got, you're an African in Europe, you're an African in this area. And for me, it's not something that should be shocking because I mean, if we care the magnificence of God in us, then every other thing that we look at and we think, wow, this is potential. That is the reality of what God has called us for. God has called us, you know, to partake in that greatness, in that success. So your mind, you know, is, is an asset. That's why um, the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, it speaks about, you know, being um, renewed or being transformed through the renewal of your mind because when your mind is renewed that's when you are able to perceive you are able to see the perfect will of god and when you know the will of god you know what to do you know how to walk you know how to navigate through life because you have like the mind or, um the map of god that tells you what you ought to be doing how you ought to be manifesting or functioning so because your mind is an asset the enemy also fights for, for that asset because he understands just how important it is to have your mind in his hand. So you want to look at your mind as um, a gold mine, you know. So if the enemy can get that gold mine, then he has stolen so, so much for you. So it's one of the things that as we pray for Africans, we need to pray for when we pray for ourselves that we God must just return that mindset you know, that allows us to be able to see ourselves as he sees us or as he has created us, you know, and also not being ignorant, but we need to expand our thinking. I love sessions like this, as I said earlier, that for me, so enlightening, they expand your thinking, you know, they broaden your scope of thinking. So if your thinking has always been in a box in Nigeria or in South Africa, then this session has just been something else for me. So we cannot afford to be ignorant because the enemy then will thrive in that, you know, um, ignorance. And the other thing that I've noticed, you know, amongst us, I'm not sure if this also happens in Nigeria, but here in South Africa, our youth, you know, we have this mindset of um, entitlement. You know, we are this generation that feels that, you know, everything should just be given to us. We must just have you know, everything, we must just have everything given to us on a silver platter and all that. And sometimes that can lead to a mindset of greed to an extent where you don't know, you know, where your boundaries are. So you just keep taking and taking and taking and you don't know when enough is enough. And, you know, when people uh, are greedy, you know, they go over the boundaries. You know, I, I, I had someone saying that when you write in a book, you will see that there are these 
lines. They're usually in pink here in South Africa. So when you write, you write in between these margins. You write in between these lines. You're not supposed to write over the other line or, you know, over the line on, on, on your left. So when you have um, a mindset of greed or of just taking and taking and taking everything, you just want to write all over the space. You, know, you just want to take everything that you can find, which then, you know, destroys the balance because after you've taken everything for yourself, other people not, and are left with nothing. So we have this mentality of just wanting to hold everything for ourselves. We want, you know, the glory for ourselves. We want, you know, the fame for ourselves. We want the wealth for ourselves. But then God is a God, you know, who of order, you know, when you have been blessed with something, be it knowledge, be it some gift or talent, it is basically for you to be able to serve, you know, others. And now when we have a mindset like this, it, it, it makes us very vulnerable to the devices that the enemy uses in our minds. Because if you are not able to get those things that you feel that you're entitled to, then you are filled with, you know, thoughts of anxiety. That's where your depression comes in. And the enemy wants to really, really use those devices to attack our minds and to render us dormant to keep us you know inactive to keep us in uh, you know ineffective you know he brings fear of the unknown things you know and fear paralyzes you because when you are fearful you are scared of what people will say if you take action you are afraid of what people will say you know if you lose so fear puts you in this place where you are limited to move, you know, you are not able to fully manifest or, you know, uh, emerge as God would have you emerge and occupy and have that influence. But thank God that the Bible says God did not give us the spirit of fear. So the minute you feel fearful, the minute you feel anxious, then you want to go back in your mind to ask yourself, where, what is the source of this fear? What is the source of this anxiety? We see a lot of young people committing suicide. We see a lot of young people, you know, that are um, on drugs. We see a lot of young people that are addicted to sex, that are addicted to alcohol and all sorts of things because they are trying, you know, to, 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 to numb something in their minds that they do not want to confront or because the enemy has lied so much to them. He has told them that, you know, what, for you to be able to, to be accepted by um, society, you need to have so many girls, you need to have so much alcohol, you need to be seen by having so much money and all those kind of things. And some of us even become arrogant, you know, because now the enemy does not want you to, to truly live in that freedom or liberation that God has called you for, you know. And then um, the other thing with us um, Africans, you know, when um, they were talking about the, um, the making of the slave, you realize from that 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 is the reason that as South Africans we see or we look down on ourselves so much because we've been given this idea that we are not enough. You know, the oppression has taught us that, you know what, an African can only go this far. You cannot, you know, succeed beyond this point. You cannot um, grow beyond this point. You cannot do these things beyond this point. And sometimes those lies, you know, are very, very damaging because sometimes the enemy tricks us into wanting to prove ourselves so much that we go even beyond the boundaries of God to just prove that you know what I can get wealthy. That's why you see a lot of corruption in our government. You see a lot of corruption in our leadership because everybody just wants to prove that you know what I can have more. So that's why that spirit of division was was also planted in the making of the slaves. If, because they would take one um, black person and they keep the person working inside the house and they keep other black people in the garden or outside the gate and they keep feeding this one in the house with the mentality that you are better than those ones. See, you are here in the house, you are sitting with us. And then now this one starts looking down on those ones that are out there feeling he or she is better. And that's something um, Sister Viela also mentioned yesterday that as South Africans who were given this mentality that, you know, we are superior, we are much better than all the Africans. That's why when everybody comes here in our country, we are not able to see them as our fellow brothers and sisters, but we look at them through the eyes of the mentality that, you know, the colonizers have given 
us, you know. And now you look at the things that um happening or the things that we are being fed in the media, then that's those are one of the things that make you want to know who exactly is behind the media, who is the source, who is controlling the content of the media. So part of us arising as young people also means that we need to arise, you know, and take the gate, take, you know, those strategic positions in those areas that, you know, have influence in those areas. Yes, where and all that, and instead of being, you know, that um, there's a lot of doing here in South Africa. There's a lot, you know, of protesting, protest against our leadership. We protest against anyone. So that's sort of like who else us. And the Bible clearly states that, you know, that's not how you deal with leadership. Whether the leadership is corrupt and all those kind of things, the Bible clearly says. Pray for those that are in the positions of leadership so that there will be peace in the land. So instead of us being the ones that wage physical war against them, our war should not be carnal, but it should be, you know, a spiritual war or a spiritual method of fighting. Because now we have been given an added advantage, you know, as children of God, that, you know, we are able to fight using weapons that the world knows nothing about so now after that was um the mindset or the mentality that i wanted to to just look at and, and share so now the, the second part is our um, spiritual life so we need to arise spiritually and be alert you know and in as much as we read books in as much as we you know we, we we listen to a whole lot of things we need to also keep an understanding that for us the word of god is the supreme or the highest law that guides how we function, that guides even how we do business in this very wicked um, uh, world. You know, so it's time for us to be alert, to be awake in the spirit, because it's in everything that manifests in our world, it starts in the spirit. So if we are not active in that uh, sphere or in that atmosphere of the spirit, we'll just be shocked at the things that are happening. Whereas God has given us the dominion, God has given us the authority, you know, to control the things that are supposed to manifest in the physical. So we need to also rise, you know, as intercessors or as children of God. So we need that continuous growth through the feeding of the spirit, not just, you know, only intellectually, but we need to stay, you know, connected because God has given us the grace of revelation. A lot of things that shock us or that surprise us are not supposed to surprise us. We are supposed to have that, you know, first glimpse of what is to come or that idea of what is going to happen in, in Africa. You know, the, the people of the world are supposed to be coming to us and say, what do you see in the next six months? What is God doing in this season? Instead of us sitting and, and, and being, you know, shocked and submitting to all the laws and the rules of the world, but that the world is supposed to come to us for consultation to say, children of God, what are we supposed to be doing? Remember in the Bible, it speaks about the sons of Ithaca. Those ones knew and were able to interpret the times and the seasons. So that is what God wants us to do. You know, when we arise, when we shine and we, we occupy, the world is supposed to look to us for answers. The world is supposed to look to us, you know, for what policies do you think we should implement? What is God saying for our nation? What is God saying about our economy? And all those kind of things. The Bible in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, verse 3, that's my favorite scripture. God says, call on me and I will hear you. I will answer you. I will reveal to you the hidden things. And these are things that you would not know. You would not hear anywhere else except the Lord reveals them to you. So as we arise as young people, we need to remember that we have that grace, we have that platform where we can just go into a secret place and God will just tell us, you know, all these things and give us wisdom on how to, to, to operate, you know, on how to take physical things that are happening, you know, the pandemics, the disasters that come and be able to interpret them or be able to give
because a lot of us are warriors when it comes to talking. We are legends when it comes to talking. But then when it comes to action, there is not much that we are able to do. So if we are people of faith, then we need to be able to supplement or to add to our faith the works that people will be able to see. So it's not get up you know, and put into action the, what we are believing God for because prayer is not a substitute for, for action. If we were not meant to just pray, then God would have left it would have left it at that and we would just pray and things would just happen. But God has placed us on this earth wherever God has given you influence, wherever God has positioned you, He positioned you there. So that you can be able to do certain things with your hands, with your mouth, with your feet. You know, so that we don't just become people of all talk, you know, and 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 and, and no action. So in as much as you pray you speak in tongues, you know the word, you spit fire, and all those kind of things. Like I said earlier, um, you know, competence, the ability to act and put into action and produce results. We need to be people that are able to do that. Because if we carry the anointing of God, the anointing of God comes, you know, with excellence. And, you know, it's not just about talk. The kingdom of God is not just about talking and all that, but it's about action. So we need to stand, you know, and not be lazy and not be ignorant and work, you know, in your business or in your in your job. It's one of the things they were teaching us in the uh, Marketplace Ministry Institute, that, you know, what, you need to be able to work, produce results, you know, in your in, in, in your business, but not following all the standards of the world, because now you have something very superior, something very powerful in you, and that is the Spirit of God. So there are things that you are supposed to say no to in your business. There are things that you are supposed to say no to in your workplace, because according to God's standards, they are not right. So that's another thing that you also want to pray, that when you are asking God for a job, when you are asking God for a business, when you are going to enter into a particular industry, one of the elders mentioned this, that you need to pray that God will open your eyes. God will show you this environment that you are going to. God will show you who controls this environment. You know, God will just show you strategically where to position yourself, how to position yourself, and how, you know, to make influence in that particular space, instead of falling into the traps or into the influences of the world in that particular space. So I believe that we are called to occupy, we are called, you know, to have dominion and authority everywhere where God has positioned you. And then the last thing or the last area where I would like to see Africans shining is in the area of service, you know, of um, servanthood. And this was also mentioned in the session in the in the afternoon. I believe the service or the ability to serve it's one of our biggest callings. Jesus went around serving. Jesus, you know, he, he served, he washed the, the feet of his disciples. And he said, whoever wants to be great must be able to serve. One of the leadership uh, teachers says that if servanthood or if serving is below you then leadership is too high for you it's not the thing for you because for you to be able to emerge as a leader for you to be able to have influence you need to be able to serve people because before you ask them to serve you or to give you something you need to be able to touch their hearts so you are not going to be remembered for what you took from people but you're going to be remembered by what you gave to the people we remember Jesus so much now because of all the things that he has done and all the things that he has given us so that it is for service it is for us to serve you know without expectation we should not be a youth that is running after a while you know and um, this was mentioned I think on, when, on, on Wednesday that you know we should be able to serve without asking what's in it for me but then you are a child of God you are a servant of God so every single thing that you do it is for the glory of God it is for his benefit it is for the glory of of his name and when we are that youth that is you know running after what that's how the enemy sets a bait for us to manipulate us because he knows that if you are after money if you are after fame if you are after all these things then he just puts it as a bait and he knows that you are going to ignore 
going to run into the club because we are after a reward. So let us continue to serve the people of God through mentorship. I've had a lot of great speakers here through mentorship, through coaching. You know, we can be served of service to those that are coming after us. You know, that's how we make impact or that's how we make generational impact. So it's time to shine. It's time for us to be bold. It's time for us to unshackle the boundaries in our mindset or in our thinking. It's time for us to arise and see our God sees us because even lost inside. So we need to be able to recognize, you know, and add the added advantage that we have because of the call and the anointing of God upon our lives. Thank you so much. God bless you. God loves you. And, you know, you have the apron of his eye. There is nothing that shall be impossible for you. There is nothing that shall be difficult for you. There is no door that is going to be shut in your face because you are African, but every door is going to be open for you because you are a child of God. You carry the very spirit of God within you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you very much, Sister Tinswalu, um, for that word. Thank you for um, again uh, reminding us again uh, some of the very, very important uh, issues in our journey and in our work with God. And as young people, um, there are a lot of there are something for me you mentioned that are very, very important. Uh, one of it is the fact that. Uh, we must not just be, we must not just be talkers. Okay, somebody has said that this talk, this talk is cheap. Okay, it's easy to speak, it's easy to talk. Okay, but we must match our words, our talk with the corresponding action. Okay, uh, and I think for me, more than ever before, uh, that time has come. Some of us are here. We are there are books inside of us. And we are just okay. I will. I will. Some of us are here. We 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 are supposed to be. You know, going for a training, you know, that will make us to be more competent in our area of calling and assignment. We're just procrastinating. You know, some of us, there are certain steps we're supposed to take to move on from where we are to the next phase, okay? And we perhaps have not taken such step, and we're just been maybe following, um, just talking about that. So we must, not, we must not just talk, and we must take step. Uh, I mean, that for me, very important point. And you also something you said something very important that uh, we can overemphasize service. Oh, service! You need to to serve and to serve and to keep serving. Okay, and there is always opportunity to serve from your home, from my home, my house, to my environment, to my community, to my office, to where I work. There's always opportunity to serve. Okay. And there are different capacity, I mean, different areas where we can where we can serve. I mean, these are the days that um, we, like I said, young people want to just become a boss of their own without paying the price of service. Okay. And I do trust that some of us uh, will be challenged again. Uh, those of us who have not yet, you know, identified area where we can serve. I trust that we begin to pray, Lord, show me who can I serve, where can I serve, okay? And then some of us who are who have served or and then we are no longer serving. <laughs> and I trust that we, we arise from that, and begin to and begin to give ourselves, you know, to service, to, to serve God's people, to serve uh, our, our, our family, to serve the brothers and sisters around us. Okay. So I I want to thank you for um, for that word um, from your heart. I I want to ask. Um, if we have any question or comment, our sister, question or comment, oh, we still have uh, we still have like eleven minutes. I have a question. Okay, any other person? Okay, um, let's take your question, uh, Sister Ruth, and then. Uh, uh, I, I 
just before you maybe, maybe just before you ask that sister, I would also appreciate if you also share a bit with us uh, on some of the things we are doing in the marketplace. Okay, how the Lord has helped you, you know, and uh, how you have served and um, capacity. And I, I, I just thought that you'll be able to you know share some, some very practical experience with us, you know, uh, as we take the as we take the question. Okay, so Starud, you can go ahead with your question. Okay. Um, I think my question might tie into what else you want to hear, Brother Demi. So my question is about, um, to you, Sister Tintualo, how have you found balancing growing in your career and also growing your spirit, man? So um, ensuring that you're still staying connected to, to God and growing in that, but also still growing in your career. I would please like to hear your, your experience in that. Okay, thank thank you. Can I go ahead? Yeah, you can go ahead, please. Okay. So for me, what has been the most um, helpful thing in, in, in being able to strike a balance? Um, for me, balance comes from where you are standing or where you are rooted. So it's things that someone might look at and see as, you know, insignificant or small. But uh, I've got what I call um, rituals that I, I do on a daily basis. So my understanding is that if I'm standing on God or if I'm able to go down on my knees, then wherever I go, I will be able to, to stand because I am empowered from that sacred place with God or from that um, meeting place or from that prayer place with God. So that's where I get the wisdom to know what to do, when to do it. And, you know, also the wisdom to say no to certain things, to postpone certain things instead of wanting to take everything all at the same time. So I always um, want to be in a position where I need to, 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 to hear from God and get that direction as to, okay, what course am I supposed to do now? Who am I supposed to surround myself with you know who are the people that are supposed to be surrounding me helping me or challenging me or helping me to, to to grow or showing me because sometimes you've got what i call blind spots you don't see certain things but when you are surrounded by god ordained relationships or god ordained people in your life they're able to help you or to show you what you are missing or what you should not be doing or what you should be doing and then also that is um also very important to have those um relationships because sometimes we we i don't know as women i'm not sure if guys do this there's just a whole lot of things that we we, we are doing i was saying earlier on that i didn't sleep the whole night yesterday i, I only went to bed at 5 a.m this morning so you want god to surround you with strategic people who will know what to help you with at a certain time because it's impossible for you to be able to do all the things on your own or alone so you need those um strategic relationship that divine guidance from god to say how do i balance this how much time should i put in this activity how much time should i put on my studies but then for me, the bottom line or the most uh, sensitive part of it is that I'm standing on grace. So I don't want to find myself in a position where I'm so busy that I don't have time for prayer because it is the very prayer that is able to sustain the business or every other thing that I'm able to do. Okay. Thank you for... Uh, for that, uh, for that answer. Any other question? Yes, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Any other question or comment? Okay. Um, I don't think uh, I don't think we have any other question. Uh, from anyone. Okay. Um, so, well, thank you once again, uh, every one of us who are taking our time to participate in this session. 
uh, sure we are again encouraged and blessed. Uh, it's again, it's time to serve. I kind of emphasize it. Uh, Africa, Africa would not um, be what she's called to be if you and I does not arrive uh, and get to work. Uh, get to work. Diligence is important. Competence is important. Uh, we must pay the price uh, as, as young people. So thank you, um, dear sister, for uh, sharing. Now we, we trust that there will be more opportunity to uh, work together, uh, to be able to build the kingdom of God, to advance the kingdom of God, both in Nigeria and in South Africa. Just the beginning, uh, great thing that God is doing, and I'm happy that uh, the Lord is linking us together. Uh, just before we go, I will ask uh, uh, Dr. E.K. You can see him to pray for us. Um, to bless us. Thank you. Thank you, sir. At least I can be heard and seen now, I hope. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, th I thank God we fought the battle and we won. <laughs> uh, yes, it, was, it, was a, it was a serious battle, but after we your session, we were talking like, wow, this is like climbing a very high mountain. <laughs> it's terrible. But we bless God. We bless the Lord, sir. Father, we thank you for our beloved sister, whom you have used to bless us this evening. We give you all the glory. Thank we you. give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. We give you all the worship. Mm -hmm. We acknowledge you as your word has said unto us, unto us. In all our ways, we should acknowledge you. Mm -hmm. Father, this is just to acknowledge you that she did not minister out of her own content. Mm. But she ministered based on what you have given unto her to give unto your people this evening. We therefore ask that you replenish her. Mm -hmm. That out of every word that has gone out, Lord, you will give her double. Mm -hmm. That she will continue to increase and to grow in your might and your grace. That the calling that you have upon her, Lord, shall not diminish. Amen. But by your own hands, you shall increase her to the glory of your name. Mm -hmm. Thank you for every one of us that have listened to her this evening. We ask that your grace shall continually be upon us. Mm -hmm. That all this we have taken from Wednesday, Thursday, today, Friday, and even that of tomorrow shall never be in vain. Mm -hmm. That they will, bear, they will bear fruits, 30, 60, 100 folds all to the glory of your name. Mm -hmm. Thank you for everyone that has been here. As we log out and face other activities of the day, we ask that we do not depart from your presence, that your mm -hmm. presence will be a lifestyle companion unto us in all that we do to the glory of your name. Thank you for our brothers and sisters who have joined from different parts of the world. Lord, give them the grace and the enablement to continue to do exploits in their Amen. areas of calling. Be their help. Amen. Be their companion. Amen. Be their Amen. present need at all times, O oh Lord. Amen. That each time they look up to you, we have a cause to say, thank you, Father, for Amen. doing this for me. Amen. For on our own, have we not done anything? But Amen. by you, we have done all things. And by you, we can run every race because our strength comes from you. Let it be, O oh Lord, that grace will be multiplied even unto the organizers, those who have put this together. Let your grace multiply. Let the resources that have been spent in doing this be replenished in multifolds. Thank you, mighty God. That these young ones you are raising that are listening, Father, that you will grow giants out of them for your own kingdom. Amen. Amen. They will be mighty men and mighty women Amen. that will liberate our continent, that you will Amen. put in them the spirit of excellence Amen. that we see arising out of them. Davids, Deborahs, Hadassahs, Esthers, O oh Lord, mighty men of valor, mighty women of valor, O oh Lord. Father, let it be that someday they will look back and say, thank God that I participated in this program. I picked this from here. I picked that from here. 
Lord, let it be their testimonies in times to come, that this effort will never be in vain. Thank you, ancient of days, for we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahushua Hamashiach. Amen. 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 Thank you very, thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you for, for blessing thank us. You. Again, let me remind us, um, apart from the light and knowledge and understanding we are getting, we are also being impacted, okay? And the prayers are uh, impartation. Okay, so they are, and they are a very important part of the session. So thank you once again for uh, making our time to be here. Tomorrow is the last day, so you don't want to miss it. Uh, and, and I do trust that we... Uh, make ourselves available, plan our weekend very well, uh, very well, so that we are not crowded by activities. Tomorrow, uh, Pastor Moses will be sharing and anchoring the session. Pastor Moses and Sister Ruth from South Africa uh, will be anchoring the session in the afternoon. And Kadia uh, Dijolo uh, uh, will also be sharing in the evening. That will be the last session. Okay. So please make our time tomorrow. Let's tell others who are not on the platform to also. Uh, make our time to be available tomorrow to participate uh, to in tomorrow's session. Like I said, that uh, God is impacting us. I do trust again tomorrow that um, the, the blessed will be impacted again so that we can indeed arise uh, to go and begin to release the glory of the Lord and the light of God into our world, into uh, the sphere of influence that we have been called to function in. Thank you once again for coming. Please endeavor to register if you haven't, so you can have access to the replays. Uh, as we'll be uploading them shortly after this uh, session. For those of us who are joining for the first time, please register so you have access to the to the replays. Uh, the Lord bless us as as we go about our uh, various schedule for the rest of the day. See you again tomorrow uh, in the afternoon and in the evening session. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir.